Have you ever strolled by one of these odd looking gizmos and wondered, what in the world is that? Or maybe you've come home one time from work and found a note on your door saying your backflow has been tested, only realize you have no idea what a backflow preventer is, or where it's even hiding. Like, we're some top secret plumbing ninja that shows up once a year, does their thing, and then vanishes without a trace. But wonder no more, because today, we're bursting open the mystery of the backflow preventer. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel, or welcome back if you've already seen our other videos. I'm Corbin Moore with 1A Services, and today we're going to chat about backflow preventers. Those often overlooked gadgets you see everywhere but probably don't understand, or more likely than not, don't even put any thought into. So get comfy, because by the end of this video you'll know exactly what these things do and why they are so important. In our last two videos, we explained what backflow and what cross connections are. But here's a super short version for now. Backflow is when water flows in the wrong direction, usually caused by a sudden drop in water pressure or a burst pipe. Cross connections now are those points in the system where contaminants could slip into the clean water supply. When that happens, you could end up with some pretty nasty stuff in your drinking water. And well, that's where our superhero, the backflow preventer enters the scene. All right guys, so let's start off with what a backflow preventer is. So a backflow preventer is basically like the bouncer of your plumbing system. It lets water flow in the right direction, but not the wrong. And if for any reason it tries to go backwards, it slams the door shut. This keeps your drinking water along with your neighbors clean and safe. These can look kind of weird, big metal assemblies, sometimes a little rusted, often out by the street, sometimes in the ground, buried in a box. But trust me, behind the scene, they are doing a crucial job. All right guys, so not every backflow preventer is made to do the same thing. Just like these two tools are not made to do the same thing. This one is a hammer, great for hitting nails and other things. This one, pipe wrench great for tightening pipe in. But you definitely wouldn't be able to tighten pipe in with this and, well, I mean, it does make a pretty good hammer so I don't even know why you use those. But let's talk about it. Some backflows are great for back siphonage. Others are great for back pressure. Some are good for health hazards. Some are not. And there are even a couple that are good for everything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna explain them all from simplest to most difficult. All right, let's go ahead. Let's break them down. So here we have the double check valve assembly. It's made of two separate check valves. They are good for back pressure and non-health hazards only. When the water's turned on to the device, the checks remain in the closed position. But as the pressure builds, the water then opens the number one check and water flows into the device. Once the pressure between the checks build, the water then opens a second check and water flows past the device in the intended direction. If the pressure drops before the device, both checks shut and the per this prevents backflow from back pressure. Here we have a pressure vacuum breaker and a spill resistant vacuum breaker. They're made of a check valve and a float valve. These two devices are almost the same and they are good for health hazards but only back siphonage. Now as the water gets turned on, pressure builds up. Once the pressure builds up enough, the number one check valve will open and fill the body with water. Once the body is completely full, the float valve will close and allow water to the intended direction. If the water for whatever reason is turned off or there's a pressure drop, the check valve will close, but if there happens to be debris in the way, the check valve obviously won't work, but the float valve will open, introducing air into the device, which effectively prevents backflow from back siphonage. 
Here we have a reduced pressure zone assembly. It's made of a number one check with a higher spring tension and a number two check with a lower spring tension and a relief valve. RPZs are good for both back pressure and back siphonage as well as health hazards and non-health hazards. When the water first gets turned on, the water first flows into the sensing line. This goes on top of the diaphragm of the relief, which forces the relief down. Once the pressure builds up, the number one check will then open, allowing water into the body of the backflow. After the pressure builds up there, then the number two check opens and water is flowing in the intended direction. But if for whatever reason there is a backflow incident, both checks will close and then the relief will open, draining any water out of the device and effectively preventing both back pressure and back siphonage. Finally, good old player again. Put your legs up and get really comfortable for this one. Because as I said, I saved the most difficult for last. Okay. All right, you caught me. I'm not that great at cliffhangers or becoming a viral sensation, but I do know after watching how an RPC works, you were probably thinking, how can this get any more complicated? Well, here we are. The simplest form of backflow prevention. An air gap is simply the separation between the discharge of a pipe or a fixture to its intended outlet. So if you have a big enough space between the water outlet and any place dirty water could collect, the water can't physically just jump back up there. There are no fancy valves or moving parts, just good old plain gravity at work. But you might be thinking, where can I find these in my house? Well, take a walk around. You'll find quite a few, and maybe even find a few that you didn't realize even existed. Like in your toilet. It has a built-in air gap inside the tank that fills up the water in the back. But the most common form of this in your home is a sink and a faucet. Pretty simple, right? I mean, if you look around at pretty much every single home in America, almost no faucet outlet is anywhere near the rim of the sink. And this is for good reason. Now these things are not installing for good devices. And in many places, you're required by law to have your backflow preventer tested every year. That's where licensed testers, like me, come in. We check the valves, test the internal components, and make sure everything's functioning properly. We also look for any issues and turn test reports into the appropriate jurisdiction for you. All right guys, you ready for some quick tips? Number one, know its location. Figure out where your backflow preventer is. Is it in a green box near the curb, behind your building? Knowing it is half the battle. It can come in handy to know where it is, especially on your irrigation system. That way, if you happen to have a leak on one of those pipes, you can turn off the device and still have water to your home without the mess in your yard. Number two, annual tests. Mark it on your calendar. Reply to our postcard that gets, you know, caught up with all your junk mail. Reply to our email reminder that is stuck in your spam folder. Answer the 50th random number that is calling you today while you're finally getting that peace and quiet because all of your kids stayed the night at grandma and grandpa's house and your husband's cooking the most amazing breakfast and it just so happens to be us calling to remind God, I'm sorry guys I mean tie a string on your finger but whatever you do do not skip it all right protect it if you're in a cold area, insulate it or get a heated enclosure to keep it from turning into a very expensive ice sculpture. Number four, pay attention. If you see dripping or water near your backflow preventer, this is not a properly functioning device. Remember, they do not come with a water your lawn or raise your water bill feature. So now you're in the know about these mysterious gizmos. Hopefully by understanding backflow preventers and how they work, you can also begin to see the importance of these devices. If this video made your plumbing a little less puzzling, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and share it with a friend who might still be scratching their head over backflow preventers. 
And of course, if you have any questions or you need your backflow test done, leave a comment down below. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'm Corbin Moyer, and I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe, everyone.